Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this important live session where we will explore a critical medical topic, aortic dissection. I'm your host, Metri, and joining me today is Dr. Niranjan, a distinguished cardiologist. Welcome, Dr. Niranjan. Thank you, Maitri, for having me here today to talk about aortic dissections, which is a medical emergency everybody should be aware of. To begin, Dr. Niranjan, could you help our viewers understand what exactly aortic dissection is and why it's considered a medical emergency? See, aortic dissection is a condition where the main blood pipe in the body that goes from the heart all the way down into the abdomen and supplies blood to all the organs in the body split up or there is a tear in the wall of the aorta that causes blood to rush into an abnormal channel and when that happens the blood supply to vital organs is cut off including sometimes the brain causing stroke to the uh, kidneys causing renal failure or to the intestines which can cause gangrene of the uh, small or large intestines. This can be a medical emergency owing to multi-systemic involvement and it also thins out the wall of the aorta that can cause rupture. Thank you, Dr. Niranjan, for that insightful explanation. Dr. Niranjan, how does it differ from other aortic conditions? Aortic dissections usually happen either in patients who have a previous aortic aneurysm, which is a balloon-like enlargement of the aorta due to weakening of the aortic wall or it can also happen in patients who have connective tissue disorders and aortic dissection goes hand in hand with patients who have aortic aneurysms or connective tissue disorders. Dr. Niranjan, what are the primary risk factors associated with the development of aortic dissection? The primary risk factors is, again, as I just mentioned, if a person has a previously undiagnosed aortic aneurysm or has a familial history of aortic dissections, if the patient has uncontrolled hypertension or undetected hypertension for a long period of time, in patients who are more than 60 years of age and have atherosclerotic disease or fat deposition in the wall of the aorta, in patients who have connective tissue disorders like Marfan syndrome or Louis Dietz syndrome. In, in connective tissue disorders, even if the patient does not have a dilated aorta, there is a 20 to 30% chance of having a spontaneous aortic dissection, which can lead to either rupture or death. Thank you, Dr. Niranjan, for explaining the primary risk factors associated with the development of aortic dissection. Dr. Niranjan, what are the types of aortic dissection? Aortic dissection can be classified into acute aortic dissection, subacute aortic dissection, or chronic aortic dissection, depending on the timing of presentation. Usually, most commonly, patients present with aortic, aortic dissection almost immediately when they happen and that would be within few hours to within a day or two. If the aortic dissection is presented within seven days, it is called acute aortic dissection. If a patient presents with the symptoms of aortic dissection or detected aortic dissection between seven and 15 days, that's called subacute aortic dissection. And any aortic dissection detected beyond 15 days is called chronic aortic dissection. Dr. Niranjan, what are the typical symptoms of an aortic dissection and how do they vary based on the location of the dissection? The most common symptoms of aortic dissection are sudden crushing chest pain or tearing chest pain that immediately radiates to the shoulder, to the back and goes down into the abdomen. That is the most common symptom that a patient having aortic dissection experiences. This can be associated with syncope or dizziness or fainting episodes, sweating, blurring of vision, weakness in either of the hands or legs, acute abdominal pain and 
sudden shortness of breath. In case of chronic aortic dissections, the symptoms can vary from chest pain, but may be lesser in intensity as compa compared to an acute aortic dissection or shortness of breath and sometimes abdominal pain or weakness in the legs. Thank you, Dr. Niranjan, for shedding light on the symptoms of an aortic dissection. Now let's discuss what are the immediate treatment options for a patient diagnosed with an acute aortic dissection. Any patient who has an acute aortic dissection, the mortality rate of a patient who has an acute aortic dissection is 25% at the time when it occurs. And thereafter, every hour is very important as the mortality rate increases by 1% as the patient waits for treatment. As soon as a patient has these acute chest pain or tearing kind of symptoms and is feeling very sick, needs to go to the nearest emergency department of any hospital around and admit themselves. The doctor will then evaluate and they may subject you to a CT angiogram to rule out or to assess if you have any aortic dissections. CT angiogram is the most important modality that can help diagnose an aortic dissection and differentiate from say a heart attack or any other chest. Dr. Niranjan, what role does medical management play in the treatment of aortic dissections, especially for patients who are not suitable candidates for surgery? As I mentioned, most of type A aortic dissections would need surgery. There would be very few situations if in, in patients who are not fit for surgery or they have presented very late and we think that surgery is going to be more morbid than actually helpful for the patient, then we may not offer surgery. There are very rare situations where a type A aortic dissection may be managed medically depending on the nature of the dissection and the involvement of our surrounding structures. But in type B dissection, which is basically tearing off the wall of the aorta beyond the left subclavian artery, in such situations, it can either be managed conservatively or surgically or endovascularly. Medical management can be done if there is no interruption of blood flow to any of the organs down below by serially monitoring the dissection, controlling the blood pressure and giving adequate medications. But if there is involvement or interruption to blood flow to the organs, then the patient may need treatment either with endovascular or open repair. Thank you, Dr. Niranjan, for that insightful explanation. Are there any potential complications and long-term outcomes for patients who have undergone treatment for an aortic dissection? Aortic dissection is a very uh, complicated disease and the surgery for aortic dissection is also a complex reconstructive surgery of the aorta to restore the integrity of the circulatory system in the body. Because there is a multi-system involvement we cannot always say that once we operate on a patient with a aortic dissection, they are free from any kind of complications or dangers. There could be sometimes problems or say stroke-like symptoms. There could be symptoms of lower portion of the aorta, which is untreated. There could be um, interruption to blood flow to one of the organs in the abdomen, but these become much more smaller. The chances of these complications happening become much more smaller once the main portion of the diseased aorta is treated. So complications can happen and this can only be discussed with the surgeon depending on each patient's anatomy. So, Dr. Niranjan, for patients who have successfully undergone treatment for an aortic dissection, what kind of follow-up care and monitoring is typically recommended? Once a patient has a surgery for aortic dissection, especially in a type A aortic dissection, the expected ICU stay would be about one to two days. 
the expected hospital stay would be about 7 to 10 days and thereafter we expect the patient to be independent, independently mobile should be able to do his day-to-day -day activities at home with or without help of his family members the chest wound takes about 7 to 10 days to heal that is the skin incision the chest bone takes about 6 to 12 weeks to heal there are a few do's and don'ts that we explain to every patient who has this surgery and in about three months time the patient should feel almost 90 to 95 percent near normal to go about his day-to-day -day activities without any difficulty the patient would then need to follow up with either the, our cardiology team here at Apollo in the press or to our aortic team where we will see the patient after discharge at about 12 weeks then six months and followed by yearly follow-up with an echocardiogram and a CT angiogram to monitor the rest of the aorta that was involved initially. Thank you Dr. Niranjan for explaining this. Now let's discuss how does genetic predisposition contribute to the risk of aortic dissection and what are some of the genetic syndromes associated with this condition. The most common genetic diseases or genetic syndromes that are involved with aortic dissections or aortic aneurysms are Marfan syndrome, Lewis Dietz syndrome, Eller Danlos syndrome. All these syndromes cause weakness in the connective tissue of the aortic wall causing increased elasticity of the aortic tissue. As the patient grows up and gets into early adulthood, especially in Marfan syndrome and Lewis Dietz syndrome, the aorta starts bulging or the aortic wall starts weakening as they are subjected to higher blood pressures. This can cause sudden loss of integrity of the aortic tissue and that can lead to either aortic dissection or ruptures. It's very important to meet your aortic team of doctors who also have an excellent internationally renowned gen genetic counseling team who will then evaluate and screen you for any kind of genetic disorders that could be running in your family. If you have any history of sudden deaths in the family or if you have known of, uh, of any family member who's had aortic dissection surgery, it's very imperative for you to come and get screening done via an ultrasound or a CT scan to rule out any underlying aortic aneurysms. Dr. Niranjan, can you discuss the importance of early detection and prompt medical attention in improving outcomes for individuals with aortic dissections? One of the most important ways to prevent an aortic dissection is having awareness about this disease, reducing your risk factors such as hypertension and quitting smoking, uh, treating diabetes, leading a healthy lifestyle, exercising regularly without overexerting yourself. The other most important way that you can avoid is once you're 40 and if you think you have risk factors that can cause aortic dissections, you should get yourself screened in the, with your nearest doctor, either through an ultrasound or a CT scan. Thank you, Dr. Niranjan, for explaining what lifestyle modifications can help reduce the risk of aortic dissection. Dr. Niranjan, in what ways has medical technology advanced the diagnosis and treatment of aortic dissections in recent years? Over the years, the main principle of treating an acute type A aortic dissection has remained pretty much the same. The principle of treating an type A dissection is to replace the diseased aorta or the torn aorta using an artificial Dacron tube graft. But with the recent advent of stent graft technology, uh, we do have now stent grafts that are combined with an open Dacron graft. So when we have to do an ascending or a total arch replacement, which is the zone of the aorta that could be torn, that carries the blood vessels to the brain, can also be replaced at the same time during surgery by performing a hybrid 
or a total arch replacement using complex devices which are now approved in India to be used. These are being used internationally in Australia, USA, UK and Canada. These treatments are now available in India here at Interprest Apollo and we at the Apollo Aortic program we perform these complex surgeries using the most advanced technology and advanced devices. This helps us to treat the aortic dissection to maximum extent possible in the same sitting instead of bringing the patient in the future for additional procedures which used to be done earlier. Dr. Niranjan, how does chronic hypertension impact the risk of developing an aortic dissection and what steps can individuals take to manage their blood pressure? In patients who have chronic uncontrolled hypertension, there is a risk of developing aortic aneurysm, which as I explained earlier, is a balloon-like swelling or bulging of the aorta. Once an aortic aneurysm occurs, it can either rupture or it can cause aortic dissection. And in patients who have chronic uncontrolled hypertension, the risk of developing these two complications are much higher than patients who have normal blood pressure. So it's very imperative to get yourself checked regularly, treat your blood pressure and keep it under control as much as possible. Thank you so much, Dr. Niranjan, for sharing your expertise and insights on aortic dissection with our viewers today. Your knowledge and guidance have been invaluable in helping us understand this critical medical condition better. Dr. Niranjan, any message for viewers? Thank you, Maitri, for having me here and giving me an opportunity to talk about aortic diseases and, most importantly, aortic dissection. Thank you. Thank you to our viewers for joining us today. Your health is paramount, and knowledge is a powerful tool in protecting it. We'll be back with more informative sessions in the future. Until then, stay informed and stay healthy. Goodbye.